It's summertime and that means it's an ideal time of year to head into the big mountains. If you don't have a bike that's capable of doing that, what mountain bike has just tested four that definitely are? The four bikes we tested for this test included the Orange Alpine 160, the Orbea Rallon X team, the Kona Process 153 and the Norco Range Carbon. Now, as well as being bikes that are ready for the Alps or whichever set of big mountains you choose, they also kind of double up as enduro bikes in a lot of the cases. So they're all around 160mm travel front and rear, nice sturdy kit fitted to them. Most, in fact, all of them were one by drivetrains, uh, drop posts. So again, these are bikes that can hit some really, really big terrain, but if you do want to pedal up stuff, then you can still do that. There's definitely sort of varying degrees of pedalability with some of the bikes. As you say, they are of different ilk. So for example, the Kona is a bit more descent biased, whereas the Orbea, for example, probably is a bit more of a true enduro race bike. So that does pedal a bit better. Yeah, and it's, it's the same with the Norco range, sort of like nice light carbon frame. And again, the Alpine 160 that you've got behind us, that's, that's a bit more of a sort of descending biased bike. It'll get up hills, but it probably won't be the most pleasurable experience. No. So across the test, there's only a price difference of around 200 pounds for the four bikes. What we're seeing though is big differences in how this money is spent. We've got one carbon frame on test and three aloe ones, but there's also differences in kit. Yeah, that's the interesting thing. So uh, even though all these bikes are around the £4,000 mark, we're seeing Fox Forks on some things, we're actually seeing Boss Forks on another other bike, uh, and then even with the bikes that spec with Rock Shocks, we've got a Pike and we've got a Lyric as well. So it's interesting to see the compromises different people have made to try and hit that price point. I guess the other point on that is the different approaches that the bike companies have to selling your bike. So we've got sort of direct sales through Orbea, we've got you know, Norco sold exclusively through Evans. Yeah, in whereas, the UK. Whereas Orange and Kona, you know, they're, they're shop brands and you know, we sort of, I guess they're probably the least well spec bikes on the test, is it fair to say? Yeah, but the interesting thing was when it came to the ride field, now they actually performed on the trail, we found most of that stuff didn't matter. We didn't really notice, oh God, that's got a slightly lower range cassette or the cranks aren't as nice. It really came down to like the fundamental character of the bike and how well they performed. Yeah, I guess if you sort of look at the specs and perhaps even the geometry on, on paper, the two bikes which came out on top probably weren't the two that you might have picked. So yeah, so I guess you don't really need to look at the spec really, that's probably the take home message is there's a bigger picture than just the spec and the geometry chart. I mean, which was your sort of favourite out of the four? Ah, uh, definitely, definitely the Orange Alpine 160. They're simple, but they're actually like massive fun to ride. And they've been doing the same design essentially for so many years, they really do have it down completely. It's a great shape, so it's nice and long, it's decently slack, a single point of suspension on that is sort of like, it just works and it's sort of, it's not the most subtle or refined thing in the world. But when you really start battering through stuff, the way it sort of hooks up and the way it comes out of corners is absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed the, the Alpine as well. I mean, we rode the bikes out in the San Remo bike resort, which is down on sort of the Ligurian coast. And the trails there are pretty full on. They're pretty sort of hardcore and lots of rocks, lots of routes. For me, the bike I'd sort of take over from that was probably the Kona Process 153. Yeah. It was the, the deluxe model, so the pricier one. And okay, it comes with a pipe fork and it's probably the smallest fork on test. But what I liked about the Kona was that it was so confidence inspiring thanks to sort of the rear suspension in particular. If you look at the geometry, it's not the longest bike at all, uh, it's not the slackest bike, and it certainly doesn't climb particularly well, but you know, we were looking for bikes that go down a hill particularly well. And uh, the back end of the Kona just sort of seemed to glue itself to the trail, so despite it not being a long, super slack bike, it still had the confidence there given that the suspension just sort of dealt with everything on the trail. I guess the other thing I sort of really noticed on the Kona was the wheel and tyre package. So the wheels fitted to have Maxxis, Minion, DHF and DHR rear tyres, which we know are sort of pretty good and they're pretty aggressive tyres. And they've been mated to a 35mm internal width rim, which gives them this incredible profile, really aggressive on the shoulders. Yeah. Probably wouldn't work with many other tyres on the market, so you know, if you were going to upgrade the tyres or change the tyres, I'd probably go for something very similar. Yeah. But all it meant that you know, when you've got the back end tracking super well, the, the pike works nicely, but you've also got masses of grip from the front end. So if you looked at the spec sheet, you may well write it off. The spec isn't as good as the other bikes on test, but the ride quality is up there with the best, so, and that's why it's done well in this test. Yeah, you should never ever judge a bike just on paper. We've definitely learned that with this test. The Kona and the Orange might have been our personal favourites, but the other bikes we had on test, um, what do you think of the Orbea? 
So we had the Orbea Rallon X Team, uh, it's a bit more of an enduro bike, so it did pedal better than some of the other bikes. We found that the rear suspension was perhaps a little bit trapped door, so it sort of felt very easy for it to sort of go through a lot of its travel at the back. The spec on the Orbea is very good, you know, you get boss forks, you get a boss shock and you get an XTR drivetrain. Um, but also we found the geometry, while on paper again looks pretty good, is actually pretty tall. The seat tube is more like an XL bike, whereas the top tube and reach is a bit more like a smallish large. So it didn't feel quite right to us. What about the, uh, the Norco? I really like the Norco. Again, the frame is very nice. It's four bar rear suspension. Uh, that, was, that was sort of worked really nicely. It tracks really well. The geometry isn't the most extreme. A touch more reach would have been nice. Head angle's good. The Lyric forks on it, those are also cracking. You can really notice a lot of stiffness over the pike. Where it fell down was possibly to do with the uh, Cane Creek double barrel air shock. It just felt a little bit sluggish a little bit stictiony and that even after messing with all the settings on it I just couldn't get the bike to feel sort of like alive and reactive. I think some of that also comes down to the carbon fibre frame kind of feeling fairly well damped so it kind of like mutes a lot of the feedback. That's not a bad thing by any point, it's slightly less tiring than riding something like the Orange which is very, very full on. <laughs> but it just wasn't the same sense of joy with the, uh, with the Norco. The other thing that we found was hugely important, and this won't come as a surprise when you're riding down big hills fast, is that brakes are a really big issue. Yeah. One thing we found with some of the brakes uh, was like an inconsistent brake point, or brakes which faded when they got hot, and this means that you know, when you're going into a corner or into a fast section where you need to scrub a bit of speed, if you don't know where the braking point's going to be or what the power's going to be like, it really undermines your confidence in the bike, meaning you ride slower, and that's not really what these bikes are all about. One of the things that became sort of increasingly apparent in this test is that the latest generation of Shimano XT brakes aren't really working particularly well. The bite point of the brakes is inconsistent and this is something we've noticed in testing of other brakes we've had recently. And this is an issue that Shimano really need to get sorted. So doing this test reinforced a number of things which, to be honest, are pretty obvious. If you're looking for a bike to go downhill as fast as possible but you don't want a downhill bike, what you do when uh, big brakes, big tyres mounted on wider rims, preferably run tubeless to stave off punctures, and big burly forks to take away those impacts. Yeah. So, spec aside, the main thing is to have really well sorted geometry and well sorted suspension. And that's the same for any bike, but it's really, really critical with these when you're sort of trying to push hard uh, and you're in really, really rugged terrain. 